since Storm Desmond hit in, in December 2015, we were left with quite serious damage to the route uh, between Keswick and Threlkeld and this amounted to about 100 metres of damaged raised boardwalk at the Keswick end, two missing bridges, so two bridges that had been washed out and one bridge that had serious damage to its support structure. So following the floods and the initial assessments that we made, we had a full structural engineering survey carried out of the entire route between Keswick and Threlkeld and it came to light that the damage to Rawson's Bridge that you can see behind us was more severe than we had originally anticipated and this is due to severe washout of the structure that actually holds the bridge up. Well, our advice to people who regularly use the route is taken straight from our engineer's advice to us, and that is the bridge is at risk of collapse, and therefore we don't want to allow people over that bridge. But it's not just cyclists and walkers using the route, it's also kayakers and canoeists using the river. It's a very popular route with, with those people, and we just feel with the risk of collapse, we, tr we want to dissuade people from kayaking or canoeing under the bridge too. The alternative route at the moment is from Keswick via Castlerigg Stone Circle and then on to Threlkeld and this is also the alternative route for the coast to coast cycle route 71. So the other alternatives we're looking into at the moment is a route on the old Brundome Road uh, which is currently damaged but we're working with partners such as Cumbria County Council to get that route open for cyclists and walkers. So I'd like to emphasise that the National Park do recognise the importance of this route, not just to uh, local people, but to visitors and to local businesses alike, and we are fully committed to reopen this route as quickly as possible between Keswick and Threlkeld. So our plans for the reconnection of the route between Keswick and Threlkeld is a three-phased approach. The first phase is short term, it's the temporary reconnection for cyclists and walkers using alternative paths and roads. The second phase is to stabilise and make safe damaged infrastructure and partially reopen areas that are safe. And the third phase is our long term phase and that is the permanent reconnection of the route. We're looking to have completed full reconnection in around 18 to 24 months. We recognise how important this route is for local people, for visitors and for the local business community and for this reason we will be involving them in the project. The latest information is provided on our Lake District National Park website. We're also providing email updates to interested parties and I would advise anybody who's interested to contact me via the details on our website.